record. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us here this evening. My name is Renee with Red Orchid Travel. Uh, Melanie is with me as well. And together we are hostesses with Red Orchid Women's Travel Tours. Tonight we're going to be talking about all things French Polynesia, specifically Tahiti and the Moore Society Islands, where we'll be escorting a group May 4th to 11th on a Paul Gauguin cruise with a couple of days beforehand for a pre-cruise enjoyment of the Tahiti Islands. So now that I've introduced myself, I said this would be informal. Melanie, you can introduce yourself. <laughs> I am Melanie. I'm, I'm here as Sherpa. Go and run around and get things for Renee. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this uh, Tahiti fond memories from from uh, three years ago. So I uh, love working with Renee. Okay, Melanie and I were just talking for uh, more than two and a half years. Tahiti was forbidden to enter after 2020 for a long time. Um, and they've actually made a moratorium now whereby they're limiting the amount of uh, people who can come and visit the islands. Uh, there was a statistic out when I went through a Tahiti day of 500,000 plus per week in the Tahitian islands, which is about eight times more than what happens in Hawaii. So they're limiting it now and they're only going to, um, preserve the islands uh, from that many. But that said, you never know there was that many visitors because it's so um, unspoiled. It's it's not over tourism to see, but they are protecting it since um, 2020 even more, which is a good thing. So I would just like to um, introduce you to the Society Islands and um, our actual um, land and cruise tour that we're going to have. So what is the Society Islands? A lot of people don't know what that is, but in French Polynesia, it is so vast. It's like 2 million square miles with all sorts of islands, 118 with uh, some small atoll islands. And there's um, five uh, basic archipel archipelagos and the Society Islands are one. So that little map down there is just a little map of the islands that we're going to be hopping around to. This Tahiti is the biggest island and where we're going to land when we fly there and get our ship. Uh, so basically, that's the map. And here's another little map of the islands. When I was uh, on the plane last time that Melanie and I flew, we flew January 2nd, 2020. And we heard about these little fires in Australia and this small virus in Asia. Uh, knowing we were close, we were kind of glad to leave and little did we know what would happen because they did shut down Tahiti not long after we were there. But leaving from LAX, Los Angeles down here, you can see exactly where it is. It's in line with the Hawaiian Islands here in the same time zone, believe it or not. And it's about eight and a half hour flight from San Francisco and Los Angeles. They now go out of Seattle. Uh, so that's about a nine hour flight. So picture some of the ladies here who were in Greece last summer. It's a little bit shorter than that for us from there. So tack on Toronto and you're a little bit longer. So um, let's move on. So one of the things that um, I wanted to talk, to mention and go through was some of the photos that we had when we had our trip. Uh, we noticed right away, there's nothing more than, or nothing quite like it when you start to feel this culture coming at you and slowly becoming immersed in what would happen once we land on the islands. Our uh, flight attendants probably changed Three or four times, eh, Melanie? Yeah. They had their own uh, cultural clothing, and you could start to see the tribal tattoos, um, the seating, the bright turquoises were starting to get fun. I put my little red orchid on a few pages, and there was a reason why I put an orchid in my red orchid travel because I love the feeling of going somewhere like this where it's just cultural actually Melanie look you look a little tribal in that photo I the noticed that <laughs> <laughs> so I just showed that we ate really well on the plane and Melanie and I developed this custom do you remember how we developed this custom before we got on the flight <laughs> touched touched the plane and wish us luck <laughs> yeah wish us luck yeah <laughs> 
it's so we, we do that all the time now. <laughs> Uh, okay, so once you arrive at the airport, Fa A, -E, <laughs> they have very few alphabetical um, letters. So you're going to notice that there's a lot of vowels. Uh, you get to the airport, there's uh, immediately, you got to go stand in a customs lineup. The lineup's not long because it's just your flight or two. And you have entertainment right off the hop. The men are wearing skirts. You're going to start to notice. The airline staff outside were all wearing their cultural dresses. There's a, like a museum of of all the um, tribal outfits. And then you get that fabulous stamp in your passport. And it was like, yay. <laughs> Melanie and I were like, show us our passport. <laughs> hit it. <laughs> yeah, hit it. So we, we're going to move along. Um, Intercontinental Resort Tahiti is a beautiful resort on the island, just really close, about 10 minutes maybe from the airport. We just took a taxi and I'm sure a lot of us could share this type of stuff. It costs us, I don't even think, I think with the tip it was $10 US. Yeah. And uh, Melanie and I went and we thought we were so smart. We had massage appointments made. <laughs> and uh, we went to the hotel and the first thing we'd encountered was this guy over here. And let me tell you, um, it was a little bit, uh, you didn't know where to put your eyes because uh, he was a little underdressed and um, most of them were, all the porters. And you notice again, what were they wearing? And look at all those tattoos. So you start staring and you have to, you know, hit yourself, move over, stop looking. But it's not like nothing I've ever seen before for tattoos. In fact, it was kind of funny. Everywhere you went, people would tell you a story because there are tribal tattoos. Do you know that all the tattoos you're going to see, these people have to have the elder's permission to get a tattoo. You're not allowed to just go get one. They're very different. They're tapped tattoos instead of iron or solder or whatever they use here. And they have to reflect their community and their history and that's why they need approval. So you won't see any kind of tattoos with color. You'll only see black and white. And Melanie and I were laughing too, because <laughs> her daughter, you want to tell the story? <laughs> oh, I have. We, we were offered to get kind of a henna tattoo on the boat for free. So I did a one on the back of my calf and my daughter in Canada thought that I actually got a tattoo. I just, I just went, yes, I did. I really, <laughs> and I strung her along for a long time. <laughs> it was absolutely oh, okay. beautiful. These are tasteful. They were, they were banned from tattoos I, somewhere in the 1800s. And it, if it wasn't for some elders reserving the pictures of these tattoos, no one would have any information on them. So everyone means something. Everything is completely a history um, related tattoo. It's not just go to the local tattoo parlor and get whatever you want, but these are beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And the artists cannot charge any money for them and they have to do them in accordance with the book of historical tattoos and assemble them in certain ways to represent the tribes. Anyways, it's fascinating. So right away you get this cultural dive and you're just come off the plane, you're just there and there's men everywhere dressed like this. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> so Intercontinental uh, Resort in Tahiti, I have a video on that on my website or on my YouTube channel and you can get more information about that. But the first thing, again, everywhere you go, you're gonna start seeing things culturally, the grogs, uh, the drinks are all grogs, like uh, Tahiti drinks with Tahiti names. Uh, but the beauty is everywhere here. Um, you're gonna start to see that um, the greetings that you get are very sincere and very welcoming. They take time to slow down and to speak to you like you haven't had it before. Um, just to go out and see these views, I don't think there's enough expletives to, um, to make people understand what you're seeing. Like I took these photos and it's kind of, well, some photos in here as well as I took some others from the website. But um, 
you don't understand how beautiful this is until you're there. It's magnificent. Uh, there's lots to do at the resort. You can snorkel. There's scuba diving off there, hiking. There's a spa. Like I said, there is a cold plunge. Plunge's and it cool. is a cold plunge that I even wimped out on because it was so cold. You go downstairs and you run back upstairs. I couldn't get below my knees, but there's a cold plunge there. You can try if you ever wanted to try it. Uh, now I'm good. I could do that. The free shuttle to town will be quite fun. Uh, you can go to town and go to the Marche. And I know we've talked about that before. Melanie and I went to that Marche and everything you could dream of with shells, uh, some of the music, local musical instruments, fabric, the Perea is really popular there. The women with the, um, it's like fabric around and then tied around their neck, um, different ways. You'll see that everywhere. On the ship, you will start to notice all the women starting to have uh, skirts on. They just tie them at their waist. They'll buy them in town. They're very popular. Melanie and I had this coconut that was to die for, but there was enough in there for both of us to have. <laughs> It was really there. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here you go again. You start to notice, oh, more cultural. The fabrics are for sale in the stores. People were buying fabrics and taking all the fabric home and using them for tablecloths or whatever. These skirts, I'm telling you, they just wrap a piece of fabric around them. It's not anything fancy. Um, but then again, you're going to see the men and what they uh, dress for attire. And again, those tribal tattoos. And if they have permission to have tattoos and they have them from literally toes to nose, then you know that they're an elder in that town who has earned his stripes, so to speak, by doing that. Um, so we've talked about the tattoos and everything, but the ukuleles, the drums, everybody is encouraged to be musical or dance. And just like when you think of Hawaii, Polynesia has a totally different kind of dance. Yeah, they do something like a hula, but it's different. It's distinct to their own areas. And Melanie and I tried that. Melanie got the hang of it pretty good, right? You have to be in bare feet to do it properly. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our ship came in. <laughs> um, and you know what? It, it was... Uh, I did a little video on Instagram and it was um, that Kim Kardashian voiceover. <gasps> oh, you know, <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> because again, until you see it, you just can't understand how fun it is to be able to know that you are boarding this great ship. This year, they're celebrating their 25th anniversary. The thing that makes a Paul Gauguin ship wonderful is it doesn't sail anywhere else. It only sails in French Polynesia. That's what makes it so unique. Everybody they employ from the, the area who is in charge of the entertainment and the um, the staff, many of the staff are from the area. A lot of kids are on there who are the Gauguins and the Gauguins, which are just French uh, for the kids coming on. They're university kids about to have their master's degree and they come on here because they love to uh, share their culture with you. They're very proud of their culture and they're trying really hard to keep it going and keep it um, out there for everybody to learn about. So the first thing you'll notice is the ship. It's not very big. It's actually quite a small ship. And by small, I mean, the most it can carry is 352 passengers. When you and I were on, Melanie, I think there was 170. Yeah, it was, wasn't very many after going on a big ship that we had gone out of New York. And then to this one, it was like a baby, but it was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and I remember getting on there and thinking, why is this vessel so popular? Uh, well, it's so intimate. You learn everybody's name within the first day. They know your name. In fact, the second day I went for breakfast, they knew my likes and dislikes. Would you like to have your egg done the same way? Would you like to have this drink again? Would you like your coffee black? Blah, blah, blah. They knew me right away and Melanie too, because she likes a shot of espresso <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Well, it captures the hearts of all travelers and so many people who were on our journey were also on the next 
journey afterwards. They said, we don't fly over here just for one week. We come every year for two or three weeks. And they, even if they go around the same places, they stay on the ship and continue on again. Uh, because to them, it's, they know the staff, it's intimate, it's wonderful, it's warm, welcoming, and it's specially built. The bottom is a flat bottom. And I actually met somebody uh, in November when I was on a cruise who helped design this ship. And the reason why it's pretty much a flat bottom is because there are reefs everywhere from former volcanoes around all these islands. And in order for a ship to get up close and personal with the islands, they have to go over the reefs or around the reefs. And this ship literally can go over the reefs and get in much closer than all the other kind of ships that can get in there. In fact, they banned all the big ships from ever coming too close. It will take you an hour to get off and tender uh, to one of the islands from a larger ship. They're not allowed in up close like this. Um, on the ship, I'm just gonna show this because everybody asked me for the staterooms. I think I've shown them before. This is the um, balcony with the sliding door, uh, the window view and the porthole view. Um, a funny thing Melanie and I noticed, okay, so when Mel this is a funny secret, when Melanie and I went, um, we went last minute, we didn't have a lot of notice to go, um, and so we decided to go, and we weren't understanding that the room we were in, our bed didn't separate, so we were in a position where it was like, okay, we're going to share a bed, <laughs> and we did, <laughs> and there was a mirror across from us you see this mirror here and it was kind of like oh there's a mirror across from the bed <laughs> but it made it bright and and airy in the room so it was really uh, a lovely actually atmosphere so we had an ocean view like this the first time and um, we found that you know we would have liked to have had a balcony so we both opted for a balcony going down uh, but these are your main categories um, one of the things I will say is I just called uh, the Paul Gauguin office today to update on the um, on the staterooms, and there are no balconies like this in the D category left. That's completely sold out. There are no ocean views like this left. It is sold out. Uh, so there are. I'll, I'll go over that after. So if you're actually thinking of coming and you are on the fence, I would advise you to jump ship. <laughs> Enjoy us. <laughs> okay, so here's the deck, and the bell, uh, the pool deck is where the action pretty much happens. Uh, one of the days in the evening, they actually empty the whole pool because it's a saltwater pool, and you actually float on top. Um, one of the days, they empty the pool, they put in regular water, and they have scuba diving intro in that pool. It's fun to watch everybody try to scuba dive in the pool, but they do um, offer that. There's a morning walking club. It's kind of fun. You see them going up and down the stairs to the upper part of the back deck and going down and around the pool. There's a lot of people just really taking it easy, relaxing in the lounge chairs, having a good time, watching the views go by. And like I said here, there's lots to do. There's a daily activity sheet. There is a fitness gym for all of you fitness gym people. Um, the swimming pool, there's nothing like looking out and seeing famous mountains in the background just hanging out on the lounge chairs, hanging out on your private balcony, having, uh, this is new. So now and around the pool deck, every night they put these lounge chairs away in case they encountered great wind suddenly. And um, if you wanted to stay out there, they just let you stay out there in your chairs. But now they stack them away and they put tables all around the deck and you can have your dinner out there, literally under the moon and the stars. Um, there's a picture of Melanie and she's enjoying one of the daily drinks. <laughs> I think you try Why one not? every day. <laughs> there's a different one featured every day. So the dining, um, pretty much I can tell you this. I have never encountered food quite so fresh as especially fish on this ship. Um, they have a daily catch if you're into fish. I know a lot of people from Ontario aren't fish lovers, um, but they do have all of these restaurants and you're there's none that you have to worry about coming on the ship there's no extra fee for anything at all two of them require reservations and i would advise do that the first day we get on the ship 
Um, so what I like to do is I'll make reservations if anybody wants to join us uh, for each of those reservation nights and reserve on the deck, get everybody, like try each one. You can get room service at no charge 24 hours a day. And the, um, you just walk, you just look at one of these restaurants, Les Toiles, I think, which is the stars. They offer that menu for evening. If you want to have dinner in your room or you need a snack, we are on a big different time zone. Uh, so you're going to probably be hungry at odd times. The first couple of days, um, you can always order around the clock. They have daily tea served at 4 PM and it's not just tea and a snack. It is like high tea and amazing and they do wonderful things with their food I just couldn't put enough videos and things in here all the bars are included the piano bar is fun usually there's trivia night there shortly before the theater evening uh, people gather there was uh, a pool bar where they have a daily uh, happening and then of course the bar de soleil which is on the other end of the ship and people gather there at night and that's where the entertainment goes at the end of the evening um, but just look at this, you know, the the scenes, the the views in the evening is magnificent. Um, if you can catch a full moon, Melanie, tell about your brother and what he's told you to do if you ever got there. Well, he said, he, go ahead, Renee, and I will. Bring well, it in. when we were there, Melanie said, I hope we get a full moon because my brother, when he was in the military, told me when he was around these islands and there was a full moon remember that that it yes. was you must see you must experience it, it that breaks you in and he says and if you make a wish on the full moon he says you will be able to come back to tahiti with lots of love it was so beautiful there i it's you can't even put into words how the colors are and the from the water to the sky, it is just magnificent. It really is. Like, just look at that, the purples and the blues and the colors. Okay, so left sides, that's the theater. There's entertainment every single night. Some of it's interactive. You uh, meet the captain in here for champagne meet and greet and all the crew. The right side is the upper deck at the back of the ship. And that is where all the action is late at night after 10 p.m. Uh, we did a few things in here. We had hula dance, like not French Polynesian dancing lessons. There was, um, you made things for your hair, flower things. There's always some kind of action back there. And then, um, you know, the culture again, it's just surrounding you. The first island we went on, uh, they gave us these lays and um, you never knew what kind you would get. There was, they use everything. They use all of the vegetation for something or the other. The smell of the flowers was just, you can't even, if you've ever smelt a jasmine flower, but these different flowers and different uh, things that they made these from was, the fragrance was beautiful. Not overpowering, but just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and they give you, as soon as you board the Paul Gauguin several times, they give you a flower to wear in your hair um, as well. And see, these are the flowers that we made that day uh, for our hair. And um, again, weaving the culture through. These were the Bora Bora dancers. So the Bora Bora, the Morea, the Tahiti, they all have different dance culture. And um, you'll get to know which island they're from and what they do because it's, um, you it's a deep immersion. You just will leave there and you'll be so touched by everything. Okay, Patty certification. When in Rome, if you feel like, oh, this might be the time I want to try deep sea diving or not really deep sea, but scuba diving, you can do that on the ship. The back of the ship comes down. There's always kayaks. These are yellow kayaks. There's uh, snorkeling gear. You go get fitted the first day you're on the ship for your fins, your your mask and your snorkel. They give you a, a netting and you keep that the whole week. You bring it with you whenever you get on and off the ship. If you just want to go and snorkel in some shallow water, you will see tropical fish everywhere. It's just there. There's life jackets, everything you need. If you just want to try snorkeling in the pool, that's included, but the trips are not on the Zodiac boats. Um, I find that there's other things culturally. Take a, take a look at this. This was a private beach day. And Melanie and I had gone on a couple of excursions first. This is the island of Taha. And 
there was a black pearl farm we went to see, the vanilla bean farm, which they don't have pollinators, so they hand pollinate everything. And then we went um, with this couple in their truck and we went up and learned about coconuts and all sorts of funny dancing and all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, we got to the island and this is their signature thing. Uh, they bring out the kayaks, they bring everything there. And Melanie and I got on a kayak and Melanie said, I haven't really tried one. So we went out in the water and you can see right here, we stopped. We just had to try to absorb the scene in front of us at the reef ahead. And we were told that the Olympics, they were trying to get the Olympics there on those reefs because they're fantastic for surfing. And you're out in this water and you're thinking, I am in Tahiti, I am in French Polynesia, and these are 50 shades of blue for sure. And their dancers greet you when you come off the boat and you are off the tender, you're, you've got dancers there, you've got crafts happening, you're wearing things in your hair, we're braiding all of this grasses and stuff together. And next thing you know, we're looking at each other because we have all this stuff going on. They have coconuts there. They crack them open with their machetes and they have this floating bar. So you're in the water and they bring this bar to you and uh, you just tell them what you want. But again, it's a private island. It's only used by Paul Gauguin and everybody goes there just to have some time out. There's lots of shade. There's a lot of sitting lounge chairs. You can just have a nap there. It's gorgeous. Um, and another thing, Renee, is if you guys, when you're making this trek, get invest yourself into some water shoes. So, uh, like they're a little bit of attraction on the bottom, but very soft on top because it's coral and lots of uh, sea cucumbers and other things, you want to have those little shoes on. Hey, Renee. <laughs> yeah. Melanie bought us shoes and I think yeah. we got them on Amazon. So they weren't really very expensive at all. No, but they were perfect for our trip. Yeah. But when you look at this picture here, you will not believe it, but that's why we stopped in our kayak because we were seeing all these shades of blues. So you can see around the outskirts, it used to be a volcano that sunk and then these islands popped up the middle. So they're quite protected. You can see the overwater bungalows. This is Bora Bora, the famous Bora Bora. And um, you know, so many videos, uh, so many films have been done in these islands. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, so you, when you think of Bora Bora, you think of Oahu or you think of, Maui and all of this up-to-date stuff. Well, remember I said this was culturally unspoiled. The islands were unscathed. This is typical of what you'll see. Uh, the islands are French. Everything spoken is French. There's small itty bitty communities, the shopping, the banking, there's car rentals everywhere. There's ATV rentals, all sorts of things to do. But believe me, it's probably all word of mouth. We landed um, our ship moored in Morea, for instance, and we had run out of papayas on the ship. And some of the staff told us that the chef went out and he met this woman who had a farm and she had papaya. And he asked if he could buy papaya from her. And she went out and he, between the two of them, they filled up this big sack full of papayas. And when he went to pay her, she said, no, no, we don't do that we help each other in this community and the res the deep respect for the elders they call them the mamas and the papas anybody older than you is the mamas and the papas and some of the young people on our ship would get off and they would go up to older people when they got off the pier or off the port and they would kiss them on both cheeks and one of the girls, I said, oh, is that a relative? And she said, no, I have no idea who that is. But we do that here as a sign of respect. We double kiss the elders. And so on the island, you'll see a lot of older ladies and people are offering to carry their bags. And it's so quaint, so lovely. Family matters more. People matter more than money. They would rather invest in people than fix their roof or things like that. So when you think of these little towns, think of really quaint experiences. One of them here 
was all filled with tie-dyed Pareo skirts. <laughs> tie-dyed, everything was in style and jelly shoes. You know, those little plastic mm. shoes that we used to buy for our kids when they were little, they're popular there. And here is a mountain that's very famous. Does anybody know what that mountain is? <laughs> Melanie? <laughs> yeah. There's a movie after it. Yeah. Mount Rotua. And that is featured in South Pacific, the movie Bali High. Yeah. Um, years ago, that, that movie that was song. out. Yeah, Bali High. This is where it was filmed. And you see that is just unscathed. That whole movie was filmed there. And here's all this vegetation. It's all wonderful. We drove up to the top of that, to the lookout, and it was pretty spectacular. All the shore excursions were sold out for this island when Melanie and I hopped on the cruise. And so we got to the pier and we just asked this lady who had a taxi how much to just drive us all over the island. And um, she was pretty delightful, wasn't she, Melanie? Yeah, she was. And it was really reasonable. Like what oh. we paid. I we, we ended up taking two of the other ladies that were on the ship with us along and she took us all over. She was French, but she spoke English quite well. And she stopped all over and said, what would you like to see? Now, the funny thing is you can't see a lot of these overwater bungalows from the island roads. So you'll see them when we actually travel uh, on the ship. But um, everything's French. So you're going to want to know the currency. The currency is the French franc, not the Swiss franc. Uh, that's predominant on the islands. They will take USD, United States uh, currency. Uh, so you could have both or just United States currency. It's just that there's a currency exchange on the island as well towards that. Um, you'll see the odd gas station, but maybe two on an island, really not much because a lot of people use mopeds and bicycles. Um, in the evening, there's always spectacular entertainment like I said all different islands none of the islands dance the same way have the same historical historical costumes nothing is the same if you're celebrating something they come sing around you at dinner um, you can see the gal here has a floral wreath on her head uh, sometimes the mama and the papas come on board the ship and you make these in the hallways and then you make wear them to dinner um, there we are, you know, table for 10. We walked around every day and asked people to, to join us because we feel that's the best way to learn and grasp the reality of where you're going because everybody's telling you of their experiences, where they went during the day, what they did, um, all that sort of stuff. And so it just really added to hear everybody's uh, excursions. Actually, and I think we are in still, I'm still in contact with everybody at that table pretty much um just because you just have such intimate connections so here's Morea, another beautiful island um inspiration for disney you know for the movie moana <laughs> moana yeah um and then here we are i was teasing <laughs> melanie that they were cannibals <laughs> yeah <laughs> You're gonna eat but me. <laughs> here's here's another famous mountain, and some of you may know that mountain. That's Bora Bora, and in Bora Bora, that is known as Mount Otuma, Ot Otumana, and that is also very famous for many kinds of movies made around there. And uh, some of them are like Mutiny on the Bounty, um, Couples Resort, <laughs> some of the fun ones. Um, but it is famous in Bora Bora for so many people, so many things. Marlon Brando loved it so much. He bought his own island and he has his own island in Society Islands as well. Um, shows like um, The Bachelorette and Survivor and all of those, they're all filmed over here. Uh, because they're quite unique, very out of the way. And they're pretty much, um, I, I hope you like the overview. It's just a little informal chat. Here's um, the, how to contact us and um, also our flyer. I, like I said earlier, I was in contact with Paul Gauguin today. There are four porthole rooms left. There actually is one ocean view window, but it is a handicap room. Uh, category D is sold out. C has a couple of balconies. Um, B has a couple. 
and none in A. Uh, so here's the price difference. Uh, all of the prices are in US dollars because that's how they operate uh, over there. Um, there's so many inclusions. They upgraded the ship. They have free Wi-Fi. Every single thing on that ship is um, included in your fare. To have um, room service round the clock is unheard of for no extra fee. Usually you get breakfast. Uh, I know on some of the other ships you don't get it round the clock. Um, as well as all your drinks. I think that if you're going to be a champagne drinker all day, you might have a little extra fee. Uh, but on the whole, I don't believe we paid anything extra. They have sommeliers on board with, that'll help you choose wines that you might not have tried before. And um, so there's just so many experts on that ship to assist you in every way. The spa has uh, many wonderful things. I had a massage when I went over there just to get in the swing of things because I had flown from Toronto to Calgary to get my mother back, met Melanie in Calgary. We flew to LA, we stayed in LA to the next morning. And then we went over to Tahiti and I just felt like I just needed a little massage. And again, if you have um, extended benefits at all, you can get an RMT, a registered massage therapist, um, done on board and send that in, they will honor it. So that's a good thing to note. Uh, there's some things that aren't included, obviously the flights, cause everybody's coming from different areas. We have a couple joining us from the Yukon, in fact. So we will meet up at different times. I have, um, I have, to, so on the ship, because of our group pricing, this pricing is for us as a group and I got it a year ago. And now for instance, the um, category C, my pricing on there was 53.80 and now it's 77.10. So it's about $2,000 more for each category now as opposed to when we began um, booking everybody in. Uh, our internet intercontinental resort hotel for a couple of days ahead and you don't have to come a couple of days ahead if you just want one day but um, as a group we've already saved they wouldn't allow any more groups to be formed and they ha don't have a lot of rooms left so the rooms that I do have saved by the end of this month they want to recall them and put them back into their inventory um, the Paul Gauguin ship runs on static pricing, meaning the longer you wait, the price goes up as the ship fills up. So it works opposite than big ships. But pretty much that's um, how the ship works. And then I just want to leave you with just a little bit. And then if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. And we'll just answer them in a little bit here. So uh, this is, if you watched our Tahiti video, this was just a really nice little intro. And I believe this tells you a lot about Tahiti. Now, I don't know if they're going to do something special for everybody on the ship this year, being their 25th anniversary. I kind of think there might be something coming up. So I'm not sure. I forgot to mention that our itinerary, the more islands, the more society islands, includes the island of Reatea. Reatea has not been part of a cruise uh, itinerary for 10 years. And all the white flowers you see in ladies' hair, they are grown there and they are exported. So you can imagine what that island smells like. I can't wait to go there actually. Uh, but that is something brand new. Don't know how long they're opening the doors. Like I said, 2020 changed a lot of what will be allowed on the island or not. And um, hopefully 
um, everything will go well with uh, their dream of celebrating this 25 years. Um, I did have a couple of people send me a couple of questions uh, earlier, and I just thought I would answer. One was, oh, what about a solo traveler? Um, one of the things about being a solo traveler is you either do one of two things. You either share your, your room with another roommate, or you have the room all to yourself. Um, unfortunately, with cruises, often that will, if you're a solo traveler, you pay double fare. Um, I did have a lady that was signed up with us and she backed out before the scheduling, um, can the cancellation scheduling fine came her way and she was able to back down, but she's interested in coming back. If there's one other lady that would like to share with her, she'd like a balcony. Um, but that's pretty much how it works for solo travelers. The other question I had was, are children allowed on the ship? Yes, they are. However, there is no children's program per se in play unless they have X amount of children. When Melanie, you and I were on, there was that one little boy, I think he was like 10. And his mom thought that he could go in a daycare all day and there just wasn't. But they let him join in on, on things. The staff kind of played with him and did stuff. Uh, they were from France and he couldn't speak English. So he that was, was born out of his mind. Poor guy. <laughs> well, he, he, was cute, <laughs> he was with his mom and his grandma. And I guess they had plans not to include him and in everything. And then suddenly they had to, but they didn't want to. So it, that's the only thing I'd see. But I think this is a bucket list item. That's why I opened it to everybody. Because I think so many people want to come here, but they might want to share the experience with a friend or someone else or a partner or whatever. And so that was the reason why we opened it up to everyone. Uh, so um, did you have any questions, Melanie? I think we were talking about a few things today. I think uh, you hit all the important things right away. You'll see roosters everywhere running around, which and chickens at the airport <laughs> and chickens. And I think, okay, even out in the bush, you'll find them. So it's <laughs> a wonderful experience. I think um, it's a, an adventure that makes the soul feel good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny because do you want to tell the story when we were giving those lays that I showed you that very first morning, the day after we sailed, the next morning, we were on an island. So it was January 4th, we departed. And on January 5th, we went to this island, Favarava, I think it is, excuse me, but there's so many vowels, you have to say them right. Um, and we went on this island and I showed that gentleman with the red uh, tunic and the tattoos, the elder. I he honestly don't think there was anything under his tunic. <laughs> we don't know that, we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> um, they only allowed two tenders to visit that morning. And we were on the 8.30 a.m., I think we were on. Okay. Um, and we went into that island just thinking it was an island. We were going to go look around. And little did we know that because it was the first cruise of the new year to visit, this elder had a fire going. He was burning coconut shells. And he had bare feet. And he kept rearranging the fire with his bare feet. And he couldn't speak English, he spoke French. And he had everybody go around and he wanted to give his New Year blessing to everybody. And that's when they gave us the lays and everything. We found out later that the people that hadn't gone in in the morning, they didn't get to be, to experience this and all the drumming circle that was there and all of the vendors selling their wares and seeing tie dyed items again. <laughs> that was quite the experience. And it then we, yeah. and then we were told we were not allowed to throw the lays in the garbage. Nope. There was something we had to do special, right, Mel? Yes, you had to go on to the boat on the deck, and you look out on the water, and you threw your lay out. That way, you were going to always be welcomed back, and you would be brought back to the island. And it yes. worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just like Maui has experienced all these fires and they really want people to come back and get their island, their tourism going again, even though Lahaina is not open and parts of Kanapili are not open. And we've had to postpone our trip to Hawaii because of all of that. Um, 
this is the same. When we were on Morea, for instance, there was a club med there. And at first I thought it was a zoo because there were chickens and roosters running around a hole inside on the other side of the fence. And I said, what is that, a zoo? And one of the ladies said, no, that used to be the club med. But after 911, nobody came to our island anymore and it closed down. In fact, everybody was out of a job on those islands. So I can't imagine how they fared after 2020. A lot of people went out of business and it's all tourism by small families. Women are the taxi drivers, the men organize tour companies. I don't know how people stayed in business, but they're actually back up and running again. So it's going to be an honor to be able to go there after being shut down for so long and not allowed to have public come in again. So I hope you um, enjoyed this and thank you for your time this evening. Really appreciate you being here. This is recorded so that um, we can uh, pass it on again afterwards. But if anybody doesn't have any other questions, then we will say farewell. Alrighty. Well, you all have a wonderful evening and uh, be in touch. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, um, come hang out with us again. We're going to be talking about our um, Mediterranean cruise next Thursday. And we're going to be talking about um, our Italy 14 day um, unique land tour um, the following Thursday. So have a wonderful night, everybody. See you again. Bye-bye for now.